Carter broke into a white woman's house while she's still there. This bitch is cooking breakfast. Cause it was like 11.15 a.m. Oh, no, not really. Look, I forgot that I invited my mom over to hang out. Is it just me? Or is it funny to go back and tell your parents about crap that they don't know that you did, but only after you're old enough to not be able to be whooped for it? Cause I got a lot of whoopings. I didn't expect to have to do this. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I wanna tell you this shit. <laughs> oh shit. Cause this story is already really, really, really bad. But to tell my mom this shit, oh shit. This is a BSG story time. You're already familiar with the format of me telling stories about crap that I've gotten myself into when I was younger. Don't do any of it now, but when I was younger, I did a lot of dumb shit. I never told you the story about how I got caught by a woman robbing her house. Never told you that story. I got, she caught me robbing her house. Uh, I don't know why this is the stories people want to hear. <laughs> shit. You know the story's bad when you gotta psych yourself up to tell it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So what happened was, back when I first started playing poker, this dude, he had took me under his wing and mentored me on how to play poker. Not only did he teach me how to play, dude bankrolled me. He gave me like a bunch of money to play poker with. He was the first rich dude I ever ran into, man. Dude was making $30,000 a month off of playing poker online. And he showed me the receipts. He showed me his bank account. This dude was making all the money. All of the money. Me, I'm smart. So dude was like, you know what? I want to teach you how to make what I'm making. So I was like, hey, I'm, I'm with that. Anybody out there that starts any type of business, you already know there's like a grace period to which case you working your butt off, but you don't make no money at all. So he taught me how to play, but I still wasn't making no money, man. And at this point, I was broke. I was broker than I think I had ever been up to then. So broke that I hadn't eaten in like four days or some shit. It was a rough one. You know what I'm saying? Like I had plenty of water, but I hadn't had any food. And it's at that exact time that I went over to kick it with the poker dude who was mentoring me in poker so that I could raise my spirits up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna learn some new stuff. He taught me how to play League of Legends too. So shout out to him again. I, I love that dude. So I went to his crib to kick it and play video games and learn more poker strategy. Mind you, like I said, man, I'm pretty sure I was homeless. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was homeless at this point, I actually <laughs> So I was still going to learn how to play poker from dude, but I'm pretty sure I was, <laughs> was, was homeless at the time. I get over there, and, and again, I hadn't eaten in like four days, bro. My, my stomach is rumbling at me and shit, man. I'm starting to have delusions of grandeur. Like when the next time I'm gonna see food and shit. It was all the way bad, bro. It's like that feeling you get when you walk in on your wife of 20 years sleeping with your brother right in front of you. You know what I'm saying? It's like that feeling in your chest, but in your stomach. And it's at that exact moment, he pulls out $100,000 in $100 bills in front of me. Because he was extravagant like that, this douchebag got had a nerve to start making Super Mario shapes and characters on the floor with the money literally three feet away from me while my stomach is starting to eat itself. I'm chilling, but inside my brain, I'm pacing back and forth. Like, yo. <laughs> I can only imagine what the look on my face must have been when I would just enjoy $2 so I could get some food. And the homies got 100 G's in cash in front of me. And at that time, I'd already been reading a lot of books that say, yo, you do bad stuff, you gonna get bad stuff done to you, right? 
But also at the same time, I'm looking at this 100 G's on the floor and thinking like, bruh, Chick-fil-A is like a half a block down the street, bruh. And for one of them $100 bills, I could get a lifetime supply of Chick-fil-A just for one of these $100 bills. All the Chick-fil-A. I'm just like, bruh, I, what if I just borrow the money but just never bring it back? You know what I'm saying? Like 100 G's was, I didn't know if I was gonna get that at that point. This is how bad it was. He's making a, a Mario Fire Flower with the 100 G's. Temptation was so bad, I reached out slow to him and touched his shoulder like, hey, hey. I told him, I'm like, yo, can you not do this? in front of me. I started trying to warn this nigga and shit. Hey man, maybe you shouldn't do this in front of people. Maybe a, a person of lesser character development would see this and want to take some of it. So in order for that not to happen, you should not do this. And he's just like, nah man, who would do that? This is cool, why would I stop this? And I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna go, because I can't do this. He was a very frail man, mind you. <laughs> That's what's so bad, That's so bad. I, I could have literally pushed him over, and while he's on the phone calling Life Alert, I just pick up the money and walk out. Like, it was, you know what I mean? Not to make it sound like he's old, because homie was like 23. He just never worked out and just didn't care about any physical activity aside from getting money. And I ain't mad at that, I admired that. But at the same time, I'd already lived in the crazy areas and done some other activities that were as, not as bad as this one. Usually. Luckily enough for me, I had one of them Jesus take the wheel type of epiphanies and just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get out of here, man. I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna go. And I left. But when I left, I was still hungry. The homie, he calls me that night. He's like, bro, I'm about to be out of here tonight, man. I'm booking a flight. I'm going to uh, Caribbean. He went to like Caribbean or something like that. He was insanely crazy rich man crazy freaking rich the mr part is when he when he pulls the cash out all the hundred g's he, he showed me exactly where he put it you know what i'm saying like what would you do a hundred g's man cash cash he's like yo i'm about to get out of here tonight you know what I'm saying? I'm going to the Caribbean. My studio patio door is unlocked. I'm like, you, shit. I was like, all right, cool, man. No problem at all. He leaves, man, and man, I just, I, it's, it's, man, it's as if I just kept getting hungrier and hungrier, man. Like food is something that you're used to. You'll be surprised some of the shit that comes about when you haven't had it in a while. God, jeez, man, ah. At the end of the day, it's all about survival of the fittest. And even at the time, I was out of shape, but I I'd survived so much stuff in my mind. I was like, nigga, I'm fit as hell. No, I ain't even do it at night. I was slept on it and everything. I was like, ah, right, you know what? I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. With that being said, I, I made the executive decision and decided to rob this man blind for all the money. It's been too long since I've eaten people. Way too long. I got to the point of hunger where I was just like, you know what? I'm trying to do it right and I ain't eating like six days. Somebody's gonna have to get got, goddammit. You ever thought about how many Big Macs you could buy for $100,000? Huh? How many Wendy's kids meals? Huh? How many Popeye's chicken sandwiches? You know what I'm saying? Bro, I didn't even wait till night. <laughs> Which was the first mistake I made. Hunger will have you doing some strange things, people. Strange things. I couldn't find no food in six days. Sheesh. I am just spoiled is what that is. Because I wasn't willing to eat out the dumpster like in the first Spawn movie. Which at that point, I probably should have took that into consideration. Bro, I get over to the apartment complex, man. I'm just like, you know what, bro? It don't even matter. I hop the 10-foot wall out in front of the complex to go out through the back. 
so nobody would see me coming into the front, which actually looked even more suspicious than if I had just come through the front. I'm staring up at the apartment because he lived on the second floor. I'm athletic a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like walking upside down, I'm hanging from bars and whatnot. And I think it came from doing hood rat shit when I was younger. This was one of them. Cause I needed some athleticism to do this shit. I remember what it was like. So I climbed up the first banister and then just like lifted my way up. He lived on the second floor. So he didn't think that anybody would do this. So I walk up to the sliding door and, and I just slide it nice and open. And I'm like, yes, it's open. We're getting this money. I mean, food and money. Is that the police? Why is it every time I do crime, I hear the sirens? Y'all saw it happen on camera. It was not just me this time. I didn't think anybody was home. Do so I just walk right in? You know what I mean? And I walk into the living room. This shit looks kind of different. Different furniture and shit. I'm just like, mm. 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 so at that point, I start backing towards the screen door to get my exit on. You know what I'm saying? Because this is this isn't what I came here for. I start to hear a white woman singing from in the kitchen. There was a TV on and she was watching Andy Griffith. That's how, which is how I knew she was white. That's why I knew she was a white woman. I'm like, mm. And then at that point is when I heard her dog. I'm not gonna lie, I did speed up. Look, cause I'm like, if the dog recognizes me, then the dog is gonna bark. Black man caught in an old white woman's house? I ain't even gotta do shit, baby. I'm going down for life. I'm going to jail for life. They gonna throw away the kill my black ass, man. I... Oh, shit. I done broke into a white woman's house while she's still there. This bitch is cooking breakfast. Cause it was like 11.15 a.m. I literally remember the time. My life flashed before my eyes so bad, I was like, oh shit. The police is gonna shoot my ass even if I never touch her. Oh, damn. I'm just like, okay, okay. This is a sign from God that I am fucking up right now. My bad. My bad. I, I'm not gonna do it now. You're right. I think that's what this is. I see it now. I'm done with crime. I'm done. And I've been reading the books that say you get what you give in life. So if you give out and do grimy, horrible shit, then you get grimy, horrible shit, right? But I was so hungry that I was like, skirt all of that. I need Chick-fil-A now. I ain't never even seen a hundred G's in cash. And you gonna pull it in front of me at my hungriest, brokest moment? I'm like, oh shit, okay, this means that I'm not supposed to rob people for money. All right, I see it. I think I see what you meant. And I see the sign. And I'm gonna just let, if you let me get out of here. And it's at the exact moment that you start lying and shit. Let me out of this. I'll never do it again. You just let me get away this one time. One time, and I'm done with crime. I'm, this is the last, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. I back out of the street, uh, uh, the sliding door. I slowly close the sliding door in slow motion. They can't know I was here. When I'm doing crime, I'm like the MIB, baby. I'm sorry, <clears throat> this wasn't me. So then I climbed over the banister and very slowly lowered myself. When my feet touched the ground, I was like, oh, yes. I asked and you hooked me up. Now, remember how I said I wasn't gonna steal the money? That was before I made it out of the situation. Now I know what a real apartment is. So I'm like, look, I would still like to get the money now. You know what I'm saying? So I very politely and very slowly climbed the scaffolding of the, the real house. I climbed over the banister and opened up the sliding door and it was the real apartment. I was like, oh yes, yes, stealing. 
Hell yeah. So I, I go in there and, and found all the money, but for some reason, I felt bad about this. I don't know why I felt bad about robbing this person that helped me so much for this hundred thousand dollars, but I felt it still. I was like, shit, damn. But not bad enough to not steal the money. I only took two G's out of the hundred. I should have actually taken the entire thing. I don't know what I was doing. That's one of the few regrets in life I have. I should have grabbed all that cheddar and went straight to the stripper pole club because strippers are people too and they deserve to feel my come up. And I'm not going to, to, to zero in on any of that wordage. You know, I think it was three G's, it was two or three. So I took three G's and I balled them shits up and stuck it in my pants pocket. I went back over the two story banister and slowly uh, climbed my way back down. I went home and I had three G's, but for some freaking reason, I never spent any of it. Not a single freaking dollar. Still hungry for three days. I sat in my room with the money, stayed hungry, and never even spent a single dollar of it. But in my brain, I was at that fork in the road where I was like, yeah, man, I just felt like I was at that, that moral fork in the road where I was like, man, I can either keep, I could do this, and, and, and based on what's already happened to me from stealing it the first time, it's gonna get worse, and then it's gonna be a conveyor belt of doo-doo situations that will probably lead to me being in a place where Fleece Johnson probably is at, man. I'm going to have to kill one of them motherfuckers. And after three days of just sitting on the money, I went back to his house and climbed back up the scaffolding again and put the money back and then climbed back out and just waited until I found food somewhere else. I don't know where I found food at. That's, that should be another story time. But that time I didn't eat for a week and a half because I was on some bullshit and trying to steal a hundred thousand dollars. That's where I finally found food at more than eleven. I'm glad I took the money back. I am. But there's still a piece of me that's like, man, that's a three hundred thousand dollars. Shit. I could have had bag after bag after bag. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> so look, anybody out there that be watching them rap music videos about how crime is awesome, nigga, the shit ain't. The shit sucks. If you're ever thinking of doing some terrible, grimy shit just for a little bit of short money, it's not worth it, baby. Play the long game. You know what I'm saying? Read them books. Study a craft. Fuck you a bitch with ambition. It's your boy Blasphemous HD. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Twist.